Just to give a brief uh, introduction into the situation in the Ukraine, uh, where the uh, events uh, developed uh, during the Second Russian Revolution, uh, we should say that Ukraine was a was mainly an agricultural uh, part of the Russian Empire, with some industries developed, and um, already in. Uh, during the uh, first Russian Revolution of uh, the 1905-1907, uh, there existed some very strong tensions uh, between the peasants, which were mainly landless, and uh, the landowners on the one side, and uh, between the workers uh, and the capitalists on the other side. Nestor Makhno, as a revolutionary uh, activist, started in 1905-1907, when he joined uh, the local uh, anarchist group in Gulai Pole, and they uh, started to practice uh, things that were quite standard for the time. Uh, they were uh, uh, making actions against the police, uh, killing the local uh, police officers. Uh, they were making expropriations uh, to raise the money for the anarchist propaganda. And uh, this basically earned um, Mahno, uh, the first arrest, and he was, uh, together with his comrades, he was sentenced uh, to the death sentence. Uh, but uh, later he was uh, pardoned because he was just 16, or so the official document said that he was 16. So he was underage and he was uh, sent uh, to a life prison uh, of forced labor. Uh, and uh, that's where he entered his second anarchist university. He got in touch with uh, anarchist intellectuals and it was in prison that he um, uh, struggled to uh, educate himself both in general terms and in terms of the revolutionary theory. Here we also come to the uh, period of the First uh, World War, which started for Russia in 1914 and uh, lasted for about three years until the Tsarist government was uh, smashed uh, by the first revolution in February. Uh, in place of the um, Tsarist government in Russia, uh, there was uh, a preliminary government which was elected by the people, uh, but uh, the revolution didn't stop then and uh, events developed. In summer 1917 there was already a strong governmental crisis uh, and uh, the force that was getting more popularity was uh, the radical socialists including the Bolsheviks, uh, the left socialist revolutionaries uh, and uh, the anarchists who worked together to overthrow the bourgeois government. Uh, but the February Revolution released Magno from prison and he uh, returned to his home village in Ukraine and there he started uh, what was the beginning uh, of the Makhnovist experience. In 1918, uh, there followed another major blow, uh, which was not the first and not the last blow uh, for this uh, interesting uh, social experiment. Uh, the Bolshevik government has um, signed a peaceful treaty with the, uh, Germany. And uh, according to this treaty, the German troops could occupy uh, vast territories of uh, uh, central Russia and also the Ukraine, which was interesting for the Germans because of the coal and the bread. So the uh, Makhnovist territory, the territory of uh, Gulai Pole, was occupied by the Germans. And uh, that's actually when the uh, guerrilla warfare started in Gulai Pole. Uh, left uh, the region with some of his anarchist comrades. Uh, they went to central Russia. Uh, they met uh, in Moscow, they met uh, the major anarchists, including Kropotkin, and also they had, uh, Bakhtov had a chance to meet with Lenin and discuss with him the uh, situation in, in the Ukraine. And already during this uh, dialogue between Lenin and uh, Makhno, it became quite obvious that uh, Lenin was not uh, willing or able to listen to the voice of the masses. Uh, uh, and uh, Makhno had a quite different idea of uh, what is a socialist revolution from the one that Lenin had. But this was only the first uh, 
uh, case of disagreement between the, the Makhnovis and the Bolsheviks uh, because after the uh, Makhnovis uh, have uh, managed to successfully uh, drive away uh, the Germans uh, following the November Revolution in Germany uh, appeared the new forces and there was a constant change of um, local and central governments in the Ukraine. The Makhnovis were mainly interested in realizing the uh, potential that the revolution gave them. They wanted uh, to uh, give the land to the peasants and factories to the workers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they considered themselves to be part of the broader revolutionary movement and uh, they made an alliance with the Bolsheviks against the nationalists. Uh, and um, during 1918 and 1919, uh, they were trying to um, fight back against the forces of reaction, Ukrainian nationalists on the one hand, and also the uh, counter-revolutionary movement of the whites, which was also uh, trying to uh, overthrow the Bolshevik government. But nevertheless, uh, the Makhnovist movement uh, left uh, quite uh, bright examples of uh, social reconstruction. They redistributed the land, but this was not done uh, in, a, in any um, authoritarian way, because although the anarchists from the Gulay Poly group were anarcho-communists, they didn't force the establishment of uh, collectives or communes. This was voluntary. So most of the peasants, uh, peasants chose to uh, walk their land uh, by themselves. But uh, some of them also established uh, communes, which uh, collectivized uh, the um, means of production, some land, and were uh, walking the land collectively. But this was done not by force. Uh, the other uh, major uh, development was the establishment of uh, free Soviets on that territory, which were not like in the rest of the Soviet Russia, uh, where Bolsheviks uh, struggled for control over the political bodies of administration with other parties and tried to install the, their dictatorship through the Soviets. Uh, in the Makhnovist region, uh, the Soviets were freely elected and there was full uh, freedom of propaganda for the left parties, including the socialist revolutionaries, Bolsheviks, anarchists, whatever. Uh, the only thing that uh, the Makhnovists were opposed to was the um, use of uh, wage labor and uh, the attempts to install dictatorship by a single party. There, was, uh, there were attempts by the anarchists and socialists in the Makhnovist region to educate the population because, of course, these were regular peasants which were not always well educated, which were not always libertarian, and uh, there were different uh, ideas and uh, different uh, backgrounds. Um, uh, the Makhnovists, the anarchists, which uh, insisted on the cultural propaganda and cultural education among the population. They established free schools, uh, they established uh, theaters. Uh, probably there was not much about women's liberation, although in the anarchist circles, of course, there were some women and they were uh, trying to participate in the revolution in the same way as, as the others. So if one thinks of some contemporary examples of uh, movements similar to uh, Makhnovists in the Ukraine, I would refer to the Zapatistas, in fact, because uh, uh, if we look at the history of the Makhnovist movement and the history of Zapatistas, we see a brilliant example of how the revolutionaries come to the people with their own ideas. But if they are sane enough and if they are libertarian enough to be able to listen to the people, they not only tell the people what to do, but they also listen to what people actually want. And uh, this uh, we can see perfectly well both in the Makhnovist movement, uh, where anarchists were not trying to impose any ideas, even though the idea of anarchist communism is brilliant, but they were not trying to impose it on the people. And we have uh, the same, more or less, uh, in the Zapatista movement. Since the violent uh, destruction of the Makhnovist movement by the Bolsheviks, after that the Bolsheviks were also trying to destroy uh, Makhnovist experience uh, in the popular memory. And for that reason, starting from the 20s, they uh, 
uh, produced a lot of propaganda aimed against the Makhnovis, uh, calling Makhnovis bandits and so on. And uh, at the same time, already in the 20s, they started the uh, official propaganda in the cinema. So in the 20s, 40s, uh, 50s, 60s and 70s, uh, the communist government was making films where it portrayed Makhno and the Makhnovis as bandits which had nothing to say, which were very violent. And of course, this was all not true. Uh, and um, as it is brilliantly shown in the movie, uh, in the documentary made by Hélène Chatelain about Nestor Makhno, in the region where Makhnovis had the most influence, uh, people had very different memoirs about Makhno because uh, they understood that he was um, uh, he was the f uh, Makhnovis and the anarchists were the force uh, working with the people, uh, in defense of the people, against uh, all the governments that tried to install their control. Since the 1920s, when Makhno and his co some of his comrades found themselves in the emigration in Europe, they were trying to uh, give to the people a better understanding of what they were trying to do and what was the real social experience of Makhno China. So Makhno wrote his memoirs, uh, his comrade Petr Ashinov also wrote uh, a history of the Makhnovist movement. Uh, Volin also contributed to this uh, by publishing his book about the uh, unknown side of the Russian Revolution. But uh, by necessity, uh, these books were a sort of self-defense. Now we find ourselves in a quite a different situation because uh, Russian Revolution, Ukrainian Revolution is uh, long gone. But at the same time, we have the ability to um, try to assess uh, these events uh, from our times. And of course in the last 15-20 uh, years uh, the Soviet archives opened and there's more information about uh, Makhnovist movement available now. Although of course there are still many things that uh, remain unknown. And um, one of the results of uh, this recent historical research is the book uh, by Alexander Shubin which was uh, published by uh, Aleutara uh, Publishing House, which gives uh, a very broad picture of the Makhnovist movement, describing its uh, social experience, its uh, military experience, its uh, general political background within the Russian Revolution, and I think it gives a pretty good uh, picture of uh, what Makhnovist movement actually was, uh, in essence, as a social experience of uh, trying to build up uh, free life.